Now, the executive board meeting of the African Petroleum Producers Organization, or APPO, starts today in Congo, Brazzaville, after the organization concluded a retreat with member countries earlier in the week. Joining me to discuss the highlights of the meetings as well as other developments around the APPO is the Secretary General of the organization, Dr. Farouk Kumar Ibrahim. A good, great evening to you, Mr. Secretary General, and we appreciate you making the time on our rice exchange from Brazzaville tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. It's good to see you again on this channel. The first time we're meeting since the African Energy Chamber meeting conference back late last year in South Africa, Cape Town. It's good to have you. We spoke about the African Energy Bank back then at that conference. But first, let's start with the takeaways from this retreat meeting with the member countries that was held a few days ago. Well, the, the retreat essentially as to We've had a major uh, reform of APA to APO, and this took effect uh, in January 2020 when I assumed duty. It's been four years and a half since the, uh, the reforms, and the whole idea of the retreat is to sit together with the executive board members and some resource persons and the top management of the organization um, to look back, looked at today, and see where we are going. Are we on the right track? We invited those who were spearheading the review in um, 2017 up to 2020 to tell us they've now left the organization. Are we on the right track? Now, between 2020 and 2022, after the reform, Apple conducted a major study on the future of the oil and gas industry on the African continent. And we identified three imminent challenges that face the industry, finance, technology, and markets. And we are now, we, we call them to see, are we on the right track towards tackling these challenges? Basically, that is what the retreat is all about. It ended today. Uh, very interesting. I'm sure you're getting out of that uh, members' meeting into the executive board meeting, uh, which you just talked about kicking off today. What was the agenda of the discussion looking like for this internal board meeting of the APPO? Essentially, the board endorsed the recommendation of the uh, retreat, uh, the team that did the retreat, that we need to kind of look at the way we are going ensure that we remain focused with the establishment of the Africa Energy Bank, the creation of centers of excellence in various uh, regions of the African continent in oil and gas, and also ensure that we work towards establishing the required energy infrastructure to be able to create an African energy market. Now, now, this is very important, uh, and you talk about that. But, but let's just look about the, a bit of the review of the activities of the APPU and your members in the first half of this year. And let's talk about that. We'll get into the African Energy Bank and a few others in just a minute. How much, uh, how much uh, strides you've made so far in the first half of the year? Well, apologies, please. Uh, Am please, I with you, please? Please, please? please go ahead, Mr. Secretary General. Thank you very much. We, 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 we've done a lot in the last six months um, from the beginning of this year to date. At the end of last year, we announced that we we're going to be able to complete the uh, work on the establishment documents of the Africa Energy Bank. We also announced that we we're going to be able to decide on the headquarters of the Africa Energy Bank, and we were going to ensure the takeoff of the bank. Two of what we announced had come to pass, namely the signing of the establishment documents of the Africa Energy Bank between the, uh, by the two founding organizations, Afri Exim Bank and APO. A decision has already been taken on the headquarters of the Africa Energy Bank to be located in Abuja, Nigeria. 
One member country has already ratified the establishment documents of the bank. We need just one more to be able to get the bank started. A few member countries have already paid their subscriptions to the share capital of the bank. Our target was to get the bank started by the 30th of June, but due to some delays, we have shifted it to the end of the third quarter of this year. And we are convinced that we'll get there. Yeah, very interesting. So you, uh, if, you, if I take that conversation a bit uh, further, as far as the setting up of the operations of the Africa Energy Bank, how will it really run in, in practical terms? Uh, I'm sure we spoke about this in, in, in Cape Town last year. Uh, but again, you were talking about why was it, it wasn't important to have a specialized energy bank in Africa. I'm sure you mentioned whether they are oil producing country on the continent or non producing country. You're trying to get everybody around the table to be part of this bank. What's the agenda? Can you, can you set that up for me? First, I think, is why Africa Energy Bank? Essentially, because for the last 70 to 100 years that Africa has been producing oil and gas, we have relied heavily on foreign financing of our oil and gas projects, either international oil companies, international oil service companies, or foreign investors. Now that the world has decided to move on away from fossil fuels, the sources of our financing or funding of oil and gas projects are gradually withdrawing. Before long, we will not be able to get funding from these traditional funders of our oil and gas industry. This is going to happen at a time when Africa has over 125 billion barrels of proven oil reserves, over 650 trillion cubic feet of proven gas reserves, and at a time that Africa is the continent with the largest proportion of its population living without access to modern energy. Nearly a billion out of a 1.48 billion people on the African continent do not have access to modern energy. Over 600 million Africans do not have access to electricity. So are we going to leave these resources in the ground simply because those on whom we have been dependent have decided not to give us the funds. This is what informed our decision to say that, look, we've got to get the funds. We've got to do this in order to be able to bring out the energy for the good of our people, even if we are not going to sell it outside. Uh, very interesting. One of the things you mentioned back in September at the African Energy Chamber Conference was that a portion of the oil proceeds, a barrel of oil, perhaps if the budget is $50 and is doing about $70, $80 a barrel, you, you said about 30 that extra, what you call the extra crude oil money, could go into this bank. In, in practical terms, and I go back to that, how will it really work when the African Energy Bank starts operating with its headquarters in Nigeria? How would member producing nations in Africa uh, uh, tap into the funds that this bank would have? Well, first of all, um, each of the 54 countries on the African continent is a sovereign country, and we are not going to be able to dictate to them how they are going to raise the funds. What is important is for them to key into this project, and this project is not primarily, uh, it's not um, limited to states. It is both private, uh, the private and the public sector. Now, what I said in 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 um in what I said in Cape Town was that for too long Africans have been made to believe that we are too poor to make investments. Whatever we get is for daily consumption. And what we are saying is we don't believe so. It is simply a matter of prioritizing our expenditure. There are periods when oil prices go above what our member countries have projected in terms of their budget. What we are saying is when we get those periods of windfall, 
knowing very well that our economies are still dependent on oil and gas for everything. Why don't we take a portion of that windfall and invest it in the industry to replace what we are missing from the traditional funders? Hopefully, we are going to have the first summit of Apple Heads of State very soon. And these are some of the issues that we are going to place before the heads of uh, the head of state summit. We believe that if our member countries commit even 10% of excess revenue to the future of the industry, we would not need go begging to uh, in, in other parts of the world for them to come and uh, invest or to fund our oil and gas projects. Because as we stand now, because of the transition, these traditional funders are making it a lot more difficult to get money. And when we do get it, the terms are not favorable at all. OK, well, we appreciate uh, this conversation very much. And I'm sure at some point there will be a formal inauguration of the of the headquarters of the African Energy Bank, uh, which you stepping back on the soil of Nigeria with the rest of your team and other uh, executive board members. We look forward to the formal takeoff of this very important milestone organization in the history of uh, Africa's uh, hydrocarbon industry. Thank you so much. It's been a very great day and a very uh, interesting week for you there. Dr. Farouk Kumar Ibrahim, the Secretary General of the African Petroleum Producers Organization, thank you very much. And of course, we wish you all the best for the rest of your uh, meeting in the week. We'll